The Witcher always had the unfortunate outcome of always being compared to Game of Thrones, and that's unfortunate because The Witcher is its own beast completely. Now, one word I can absolutely describe The Witcher as that makes it very incomparable to Game of Thrones, and that word is random. Okay, The Witcher book series, there are like eight books in the whole entire book series now, and there's just a bunch of random shit that always happens in every single Witcher book. So, to begin, the Witcher book series has a really odd release date timeline where the second prequel book was released before the, f the very first prequel book, and then it started the main storyline, and then after the main storyline, like a decade later, Andrei Sapkowski released Season of S Storms or whatever, and that was like a storyline set within, in between two mini stories in one of the prequel novella books. It's, it's all a jumbled up timeline mess that's both in, in story timeline and release timeline, no matter how you look at it. Andrei Sapkowski just has some weird fetish with fucking with timelines. I don't get it, but I love it just because it's extremely unorthodox, especially in a writing standpoint. Now, Andrei Sapkowski is a Polish dude. He lives in Poland, and he's most famously noted for the Witcher book series. And he has completely denounced any other type of storytelling, it being film, TV series, anything else, because he loves books. And I get that. I don't fully agree with that, but I get it. I very much do so get it because films and TV series and anything else of the like, they can't really capture what characters are thinking, what their motivations are like, the way that a book can. Now, The Witcher eight book series isn't just around Geralt of Rivia as the Witcher. Honestly, he's not even the main character. I would say the main character in the Witcher book series is Ciri, Cirilla, who is basically Geralt and Yennefer's foster daughter. And it's not even that they chose that. Fate chooses that. Honestly, Yennefer never even wanted it to be a thing. But she realized throughout the story that this girl needs her help just to be alive. And the same for Geralt, although Geralt had a lot more hints throughout the story where everything and even literally everyone told him that she was basically the prophecy for his life. And the Witcher book series is just an extremely odd book series to go through. Honestly, I would rank this just as odd and unorthodox of a book series to read as the likes of the Dune book series, which is super unorthodox and very mature. Now, The Witcher, the one main fault I can say about The Witcher book series, mainly being the English translation where there are scenes in these books, it's not just one book, it's basically all of them, I believe either there was some piss poor translation or they had to rip some scenes out of the books because maybe they couldn't get translated well enough. But there are some very jarring parts when you read through the entirety of the Witcher book series, in English at least, where sometimes shit just doesn't make sense at all. And that's fine because at least there's a notable reason. The reason being their English translation. If you want the full main story complete, learn fucking German and Polish and then read the official novels. That's all I can say about that. Otherwise, everything in these books is phenomenal. From the writing, to the best of my knowledge, the writing is stellar. I mean, sometimes the, the English translation is, whoo, it's a bit out there. But for the most part, the writing is super stellar whenever it's about the story and just the writing of the story and the writing of the complex characters. And the characters, don't even get me started on the characters. The characters are so complete and so complex. Nobody, nobody in this book series is a good guy.
but that's much like nobody in this book series is a bad guy either. Everybody is super duper gray in the point of, say, the end of The Last of Us Part 1. The end of The Last of Us Part 1 game. Spoilers for The Witcher and The Last of Us, I guess. But The Last of Us Part 1's end, where you know the right thing to do, the right thing for Joel to do, would be to have Ellie operate on so that the entire world goes back to living a normal life. But, God damn it, Joel can't let go of his inner human. He, Ellie reminds him too much of his daughter. And for fuck's sake, fuck the world. He needs that girl that's not his daughter alive. So he makes the morally gray and ambiguous choice to slaughter every single person in the hospital, including close friends and allies, just to save that one girl because, God damn it, his daughter died. And that's much like the Witcher book series as a whole, where you're going to question every single action that happens in The Witcher. But it always makes sense at the very least. You're not going to like and you're not going to dislike everything that happens in this book series. And that's fine. That's what books are for. Books are made to compel you to keep reading, to hope for the best. And I think The Witcher does an extremely great job in this aspect. Now, the atmosphere of The Witcher is a lot more comical than that of Game of Thrones. It's kind of like Lord of the Rings where the quirky characters, you know, you have some singers, you have some, some orcs, you got some, some golems and shit like that. The Witcher is no exception. You got some quirky singers like Dandelion. You got some quirky shit like, I don't even remember the names of the creatures that would just straight up just ambush and attack them in many stories. Essentially for no reason. You got storylines where for some reason Geralt is doling against this other dude for Yennefer's affection. And it ends up not the way you expect it to end at all. And that's much like every single storyline in The Witcher. Honestly, you shouldn't expect anything to happen in The Witcher the way that you want it to happen. Hell, even the fucking ending of The Witcher, you wouldn't expect it because even the ending of The Witcher book series ends it on such a morally gray note to where you're thinking to yourself, wait, everybody that died, did I want them to die? Because I don't know. And it has nothing to do with the sometimes piss poor English translation. Now, after the events of the ending of the main Witcher series, that's when Andre Sapkowski released his prequel of all prequel books, Season of Storms, which again is set basically within, in between too many stories of one of the prequel novella books. So it's not exactly a prequel story, but it, it was written to be made as a side story that's kind of like just giving Geralt more character. Especially since it's a story about him losing his swords. And from what I remember is close to at one point. And overall, the Witcher book series is a phenomenal read. At least every two years, I definitely go back and reread the Witcher book series. Because... Not just outside of the piss poor English translation, but the story itself. There are just so many complexities within the story that just one read through, you're not going to remember or think through everything. The more you reread it, the better you understand. Not just the world, not just the story, but the characters. Because like I said, The Witcher is filled with just completely gray characters. And the random part about this story, this book series, like for example, spoiler, just so you know, in one of the books in the main storyline of The Witcher, I don't exactly remember which one, but Ciri gets thrown into a vortex, okay? I believe it started from being in a sand trap, something like that. She gets thrown into a vortex or maybe she gets out of the vortex and then gets into the sand trap and as she's as she's about to die randomly some fucking unicorn comes out of fuck nowhere and saves her ass 
That's the kind of random nature I'm referring to in the Witcher book series. So if you want to read a book series that has so many events that you've never experienced before in any kind of story, The Witcher, hands down. Now with that being said, like I said, mainly the only negative I've ha I have with the Witcher book series is just the translation in English. It just, throughout the read of it, and the fact that there are some scenes stitched together and pulled apart really makes you feel wanting more within each book. So I get at the end of each book, that's why there's a release date for future books in series because it makes you want to read more. But whenever it's within an individual book and it's because of the poor translation and shit just fucking taken out for God knows what reason, that just makes... The, the scene make no sense at all, that's kind of an issue. So overall for me, I can't say that the Witcher book series is a masterpiece in English, but if we got those quirks and corrections, hands down, this would be a 10 out of 10, even in English. But for the time being, the Witcher book series as a whole is a super strong nine out of 10. Thank you.